Hello, driver's ed students, and welcome to another lecture on the Illinois Rules of the Road Book. We only have a few of these left before we wrap this up and have you take your permit exam. And just an update on that, the permit exam will be on Thursday, and I'll have full details on that later this week. Uh, so today, let's go ahead and get into our lecture. Uh, yesterday, we talked about Chapter 9 and road signs. Today, we're going to be talking about Chapter 10, which covers traffic signals and pavement markings. And so, these are obviously things that are very important for us to understand. Pavement markings are all over the place. Uh, you know, the vast majority of the roads that we drive on have pavement markings. Now, some of the in-town roads, when you get into really residential areas, and some of the rural roads, when you're out in the country, don't have pavement markings. But all major highways and, and main roads in towns have pavement markings. And so we need to make sure we understand that. And then, of course, traffic signals when we get into bigger areas like Edwardsville or St. Louis, these really come into play. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about the various things that we need to talk about today. We're going to start with traffic signals. So you can see right here that it says traffic lights at intersections usually have three colors. I mean, they almost always have color, three colors. I'm not sure why it says usually. Um, I can't think of the last traffic signal I saw that didn't have these three colors. But anyway, we have red, yellow, and green. And one thing to note is that those colors are always in the same order, with red being at the top, yellow being in the middle, and green being at the bottom. You probably knew that, but you may not have thought of why they're always in that exact same order. And the answer is uh, for people who are colorblind, people that can't distinguish between the colors, it's really important that those lights are always in the same order. So even if they can't tell the difference between red and green, which is a common form of color blindness, they know that if it's the light at the top, that's the red light. If it's the light at the bottom, that's the green light. This is not common around here, but there are some areas where the traffic lights, rather than being horizontal, or I'm sorry, vertical like that, where they're in a top to bottom situation, they're in a left to right situation or a horizontal. And then the red will always be on the left and the green will always be on the right. Okay. There are some intersections where there might be a single red, yellow, or green light. Uh, I've never seen an intersection where there's a single green light. I have seen intersections, though, where there's a single red light or yellow light. Um, and we'll talk about what those specific, just like a flashing red or just a flashing yellow, specifically what those lights mean. Uh, some traffic lights are steady while some flash and use arrows. And we're going to talk about all of these. So let's go ahead and move into these very specific situations. So uh, you're just your normal traffic light. Here they call it a steady light. So that means it's not flashing, but it's just on. So, you know, the red light is on or the yellow light is on or the green light is on. They're not flashing. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, if the red light is on, that means you have to stop and you have to stay stopped, which is different than a stop sign. If you come up to a stop sign, you stop, and then once it's your turn, you go. That's not true at a red light. You stop and you stay stopped. Now, there are instances where you can proceed after you stop, and that would be if you're turning to the right. So if you pull up to a stoplight and you're turning right, as long as there's no sign saying you can't do this, once you make your complete stop, you yield to the traffic coming from the side, and then you can proceed. And so an example of that might be something like this. Here's a traffic light where we're coming into Edwardsville. This would be coming from Hamill down 157, and you're coming into Edwardsville, and here's this little T intersection, and you can see that there's a red light here at this intersection when the picture was taken. And so the only way you can do this is if you're over here in the right lane. But if you pull up, and, and you make your stop here in the right lane, if it's clear, if there are no cars coming from the left, 
you can make the turn and that's that's legal. Um, we look here at the intersection, we don't see any signs that say no right turn on red. So, so that's a fine thing to do. Now, a really weird thing happens when you do this. If we make this right turn and we continue down the road here, we'll see that we're catching up to this white pickup. Let's get a little closer to this white pickup and take a look. What in the world is that? Look at that thing. It's got like a triple cab on it. All right, so this is a, this is a little camera trick that happened whenever Google car was driving around. This truck does not have a triple cab on it. It's just that whenever the camera took multiple images and spliced it together, it made it look like a triple cab. If we go one more click down the road and look back at this truck, we can clearly see it's just a regular, uh, you know, crew cab truck. But when the camera, when the we look at the image from the side here, it's got a triple cab. That's so weird. I stumbled across that. I thought I'd share it with you. So yeah, at a red light, you can turn right once you've yielded to the rest of the traffic. But that red light means when that light turns red, you got to stop. You can't enter the intersection. What about when a light turns yellow? Well, if there is a yellow light, you see right here, it says the yellow light warns that the signal is changing from green to red. And when the red light appears, the driver may not enter the intersection. So that's kind of vague. It doesn't really give you a lot of information. Here's what you need to know. When that light turns yellow, if you are able to stop safely before you get to the intersection, that's really what you ought to do. Okay, because if you're far enough back that you can make that stop before you get to the intersection, then the light's going to turn red before you get there anyway. So you should be stopping. Now, if you're close to the intersection and the light turns yellow, you do not need to slam on your brakes to, to come to a screeching halt before you get to the intersection. That's not safe either. So in that situation, if you're already really close to the intersection and the light turns yellow, then you're going to glance both ways and you're going to proceed through the intersection with caution. And you're not doing anything illegal there. If the light turns yellow and you punch the gas to go flying through the intersection, that's reckless driving and that's illegal. You're not allowed to race the light. And that's what that, that's referred to as. If you're punching the gas to try to beat the red light, you know, to get to that intersection before the light turns red, that's dangerous driving and you'll be ticketed for it. And you could cause a wreck. And then finally, you've got a green light and the green light means that you have the right of way once you have yielded to anyone that's still in the intersection and any pedestrians. So when that light turns green, you don't just punch the gas. You look and make sure there's no one else that's still in the intersection or, you know, maybe there's somebody that's, that's going to run the red light or something like that. You want to watch out for that. And you also need to look for pedestrians. And once you've verified that it's clear, then you can proceed. So those are just your standard solid traffic lights or steady traffic lights, they call them. So what about when you get to a flashing light? Well, what if you get to a light that is flashing red? Now, there are some intersections where they have these permanently installed. So you might have a four-way stop and right above that four-way stop is a flashing red light. So flashing red lights, <clears throat> flashing red lights mean the same thing as a stop sign. That's what they mean. So you stop and then you yield to the tr other traffic. And once it's clear, you can go. Now, there are a couple of different times that you're going to see a scenario where you have a flashing red. Some of them are permanently installed flashing red lights that either hang over an intersection that has stop signs already at it, like a four-way stop intersection, or um, there are also these stop signs that have flashing red lights embedded into the sign itself, and they flash at night to just catch your attention. Um, or the third thing is if a, if a traffic light system is having trouble uh, like, you know, there's been a power outage or something like that. These traffic light systems will sometimes click over to flashing reds. 
Okay, so when you see a stoplight that is flashing red, that means the same thing as a stop sign. You treat it the same as a stop sign. So you yield to other traffic, and then whenever it's your turn, you go. So a stop is needed there. Flashing yellow is not exactly the same thing as a yield sign. At a yield sign, if there's other traffic, you have to stop and you have to let that other traffic go. A flashing yellow, if you have a flashing yellow, then that means the other direction is going to have a flashing red. So if you have a flashing yellow, then really you have the right of way, but you need to be careful just in case the other people aren't paying attention. Okay, but that's a flashing yellow. It says a driver should proceed into the intersection with caution. That means you have the right of way, but you still need to be careful because other people may not be following the rules of the road. All right, and then you have arrows, and the arrows mean the same thing that the regular lights mean. Uh, they're just directional by nature. So in general, a green light is referring to all directions, although when you're turning left, you always have to yield if it's just a, a regular green light. But the arrows, on the other hand, whatever direction the arrow is in, that arrow is specific to that direction. So if you have a red right turn arrow, then that means you can't turn right. If you have a yellow right turn arrow, then that means if you can stop before you get to the intersection, you should. But if you're too close, you can go ahead and proceed through. And if you have a green right arrow, that means you have the right of way and you can go ahead and turn right. The same is true for left arrows. Um, again, we've talked about this before, but uh, something that has become, become popular in the last several years are these flashing yellow left turn arrows. And those mean that you still have to yield the cars that are coming towards you. But, you know, once there aren't any cars coming towards you, then you can make that left turn. We have our pedestrian signals and walk lights and crossings. So these are not talking to you as a driver, but talking to you as a pedestrian. If the walk signal is lit, which, which would either be with a, a pedestrian shaped emblem and it would be illuminated white, okay? Or just the word walk, which would also be illuminated white. If that is illuminated, if that light is on, then that means the pedestrian can cross with caution. Okay, you always have to watch out. You have no protection against a car. If a car hits you, you're going to get hurt or killed, even if you had the right of way. Um, <clears throat> if the don't walk is flashing or there's an upraised hand that's flashing, that means if you're already out in the road, go ahead and finish your way across the, the crosswalk. If you haven't entered the road yet, then you should stop and stay on the sidewalk. Don't go out into the road. And if don't walk is constantly lit, then that means you are not allowed to enter the roadway. Lane signals, these aren't something we have anywhere around here, but you'll see them on tollways and interstates, and they tell you which lanes are open and, and which lanes are okay to use. Um, you can also see these in larger metropolitan areas, but these aren't something that we have around here. But they're pretty self-explanatory. If there's a big red X over a lane on a tollway, that means that lane's not open. Go to a different lane. If there's a green arrow on that lane, that means you can use that lane. Okay, so that was traffic lights. Next, we're going to get into pavement markings. Okay, there are a few special pavement markings, but right now we're going to focus on four main things. So, there are two colors that you need to know, and there are two shapes, I guess we could say, that you need to know. The colors are white and yellow, and the shapes are solid or broken, um, or solid or dashed, we might say. So let's talk about those, those colors first. So the color yellow always is used to separate lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions. So let's take a look at Main Street right here in Staunton. And so you can see running down Main Street, 
we have a double solid yellow line. Now that's what we're talking about right now is the color yellow. So you can see that this yellow is used to mark the difference between traffic moving in opposite directions. So on the right hand side of the road, we have traffic moving in this direction. And on the left hand side of the road, we have traffic moving in this direction. So it's separating lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions. So that's a yellow line. A white line, on the other hand, can be used for one of two things. So it can be used for two different things. One is that it can be used to mark the edge of a roadway. And so let's take a look at an example of that. So if we go back to Main Street, we can see here along the edge of the road, along the edge of the road, we have a white line. That's marking the edge of the roadway. It also happens to be, in this case, marking the edge of a parking space because we have parallel parking spaces here on Main Street. And when you're doing your behind-the-wheel driving with me, you'll get to park in those spaces. Yes, we do parallel parking in behind-the-wheel driver's ed, so make sure you practice up for that. Um, so that is, that is one use of the white line, is marking the edge of a roadway. And here is another use of the white line. So here you can see that we have white lines here. Then now they're dashed lines or broken lines, and we'll get to that in a second. But they are white, and they're used to separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. So they can be used to mark the edge of a roadway, or they can separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. And here we're out on 55. Uh, by the Dairy Queen exit there at Staunton. You can see the Madison Telco building over here. And you'll also notice that on the left side of the interstate here, what color line do we have? That's right, we have a yellow line because on the other side of this line and on the other side of the median, we have traffic moving in the opposite direction. And that's what a yellow line separates, traffic moving in opposite directions. So there's an example of a white line um, being marking the edge of a roadway. And that would be like the example here on Main Street. And we also have a white line that is broken here, but the white line separating traffic moving in the lanes of traffic moving in the same direction rather than opposite directions. Trying to fast forward or not fast forward, but move forward a little bit here on this image so I can show you that the right hand side of the roadway has a solid white line. But this is a really long on ramp here. Here we go. Here's another example. This jumped us over onto the frontage road, but you can see here on the edge of the road, we have a white line marking the edge. And going down the middle, we have a yellow line separating lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions. Okay, so that's white line versus yellow line. Now let's talk about broken line versus solid line. So what you need to know is that a solid line means do not cross or do not pass. So here on the edge of the road, it means, hey, don't go across this. This is the edge of the road. If you go across this line, you're going to get off into the grass. So that line marking the side of the road is a solid line because they don't want you going across it. Another example would be if we go back to our downtown Staunton line, you see we have a solid line here marking the edge of the road. You're not supposed to cross that either unless you are parking in one of these parallel spots. But we also have a solid line running down the middle of the road. And that means do not pass. It's a solid yellow line. And they're saying, hey, you're not allowed to pass. Just because there's somebody slower than you on Main Street doesn't mean you can switch over into the other lane and pass them. It's not allowed. Solid line means do not cross or do not pass. Um, here, if we look, let's see if I can get us to go back on the interstate. Yeah. Um, so here you see a solid yellow line along the left-hand edge of the interstate. That means do not cross. You're not supposed to cross that and end up over on the shoulder unless you got some kind of an emergency. And we see the same thing over on the right. It's a solid white line, which means do not cross. You're not supposed to go over there on the shoulder unless you have some type of emergency. So that's a solid line. 
We also have broken lines. A broken line means that you can cross it or you can pass. So if let's find an example here, here's I-55. So you can see running down the middle, separating the two lanes, we have a broken white line. And that means you can cross it. You can switch lanes. That's allowable. If we go over to this scenario in Main Street, you can see that it's solid. It's not broken. So that means you cannot cross it. You can't cross it there. Um, if we hop back over to the frontage road, you can see that we have a broken yellow line or a dotted yellow line. That means that you can pass. Now it's yellow, so that means traffic is moving in opposite direction. So you're going to have to yield to oncoming traffic, but you can pass if it's clear. So that's what a broken line means. Let's continue on here. Here we see a good example of, you know, you could have a car that's right here and we'll call this car A, and here is car B. Well, that's a really bad letter B. That's a touch better, but it's still pretty miserable. Um, so here, can A pass car B? Well, not yet, but as soon as they get up to this area, if it's clear, then they can make that pass once they get to the dotted line. But any cars on the right-hand side of this road or the top side of this road, they can't pass because they have a solid line on their side. A and B have a solid line on their side up until they get to this broken point. Car C has a solid line the entire way in this example here. Okay, so that gives us some information about passing. So the dotted line means you can cross or can pass. A solid line means you can't. If there's a solid and a dotted, then whatever line is on your side of the road is the one that applies to you. Okay, now we come to something that can be quite confusing, and that is the two-way left turn lane. So a two-way left turn lane is exactly what it says. It's two-way, meaning cars can come from either direction, and it's only there so cars can turn left. So here we see an example. You notice it has a solid yellow line and a dotted yellow line inside of that. That's kind of confusing because we just got done saying if it's a solid line, you're not supposed to cross it. But you can cross it if you're getting ready to turn left. And not only can you, but you have to. So let's say that we're car A right here that I'm drawing. I'm trying to be really careful and do a good job. Uh, not so great. And let's say that we're going to turn into this driveway right here. So we are not allowed to stay in this lane and then make the turn. We have to get over into this lane and then we can make the turn into that driveway. The tricky part about a two-way left turn lane is that let's say this car right here, let's call them C. Let's say that they want to turn into this driveway right here. Well, if they get into there, into the two-way left turn lane also, and we meet in this area right here, now neither of us can get to the turn that we want to get to. So um, that's the trouble that you run into. So you don't want to get into the two-way left turn lane too early, okay? But you do have to use it. And that's the only thing a two-way left turn lane can be used for. It can only be used for turning left, and it has to be used for turning left if it's present. You cannot turn out of one of the other lanes. You can't be in this lane and make the turn left like that. You can't do that. That's illegal. Okay, so you got to be cautious. You got to be aware, but you do also have to use it. Here's an example right here. This is in Gillespie. And we're headed south, so it would be like if we were driving from Staunton to Carlinville and we're passing through Gillespie, here's a good example of what we might encounter. So as we're headed here past Subway, you'll notice that right here in the middle of the road, it's kind of faded. The pavement markings are kind of faded, but you see we've got this left turn arrow here. There's another left turn arrow up here for the other direction. This is a two-way left turn lane. So all along that main strip in Gillespie on Route 4, they have a two-way left turn lane. 
So if you're wanting to go in here to Subway and get yourself a sandwich or wanting to eat fresh that day, you have to use the two-way left turn lane. So you cannot turn into Subway from this lane right here. Can't do that. That's a big no-no. So you got to get over into this lane. And then once it's clear, you got to yield to any cars coming from this direction. Once it's clear, you can make your left turn into Subway. Go get your six inch or your foot long sandwich and uh, your salt and vinegar chips and life is good. So that's a two way left turn lane. They can be kind of scary, but you do have to use them and they're really not that bad. Okay, a white stop line. This is simply a line that's painted across the pavement that signals where you have to stop. And here's a great example of that. This SUV is kind of blocking our view a little bit. But this is the white stop line right here that I'm putting a rectangle around. So that means you have to stop your vehicle before the front bumper gets to that line. Now, this intersection also has a crosswalk. Um, if this stop line didn't exist, you would have to stop before the crosswalk. But since the stop line is there, you've got to make your stop before the stop line. Uh, once it's your turn, you can proceed on through. You don't stop again at the crosswalk unless there are pedestrians. And at that point, you've got to yield to the pedestrians and let them go. And so that gave us a look also at the crosswalk lines. Uh, you've got to yield to pedestrians in the crosswalks. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have crosswalks in the middle of a block. We've got some similar situations to that on Deneen out in front of the high school. You always want to be observant there and uh, yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk. Some other markings that we might see are like some diagonal markings that mean you can't park there or there's some kind of fixed obstruction. Curb markings, if the curb is painted white, that means that you can park there. If it's painted yellow or red, that means you're not supposed to park there. Uh, or actually that you're prohibited from parking there. Railroad crossings, we've talked about this before, but anytime you see the cross bucks, which are the X, or you see the round railroad sign, um, you have to yield to trains. Uh, those railroad signs are a form of a yield sign, meaning that you have to yield to the train. So here are some examples of those railroad crossings. Some of the railroads also tell you that there are multiple sets of tracks. So just because a train has cleared the first set of tracks, you still need to watch for trains that could be on the other tracks. Okay, well, there we go. We made it through the lecture for today. Uh, like always, I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, enjoyed this lecture. But even if you didn't, just like my favorite professor, Dr. Phillips, used to say, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. We'll see you.